Right, this is Grade 3, Module 4, Lesson 11. <clears throat> and in this lesson, the objective is to demonstrate possible whole number side lengths of rectangles with areas of 24, 36, 48, or 72 square units using the associative property. So this is a big old huge um, fancy way of saying, hey, listen, if the, if the product is 12, for example, we want students to be able to fairly quickly be able to say, oh, well, that's 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, and that's all of the combinations that have products of 12, all right, whole number combinations that have a product of 12. And we're going to do that with larger products. And we're, while we're doing it, we're not just going to blindly memorize we're actually going to work in the associative property and the commutative property, by the way, so that students are also going to be learning a couple of really important mathematical um, concepts. So suppose we have this uh, 3 by 12 uh, rectangle. <clears throat> now the first thing we're going to want to do is we know that 3 times 12 has an answer, all right? Um, but what we could do is we could say, well, what about 3 times 2 times 6? Does that have the same answer? Does this line have the same answer as this line? And the answer is, well, yeah, because we took 12 and we changed 12 to 2 times 6, which is still 12. So these two should have the same product. Well, now that we know that these two should have the same product, we can use the associative property to change the multiplication expression to 3 times 2 times 6, which gives us 6 times 6. So now we know the answer is 36. So we definitely know the answer is 36, and we have... Um, two ways to show it, that 3 times 12 is 36. Now, by the way, students, this is not the only way that we could figure out that the answer is 36. Another idea that students could have done is use the distributive property that we were just learning about. And we could take this 12 and turn it into 10 plus 2, which makes, all of a sudden, it makes this big rectangle right here. That's 3 times 10 which is 30, and then this little rectangle over here is 3 times 2, which is 6, which gives us the answer of 36. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. Uh, but right now, we're, we're really going to focus on um, expressions that are using multiplication only. We're not interested, well, at this point, in taking that 3 times 12 and turning it into 3 times 10 plus 3 times 2. All right, That's true. But that's not what we're going to be focusing on right now. So no, we know now that we have now that we know that three times twelve is an answer. We know that that's the same thing as six times six. So let's see. Let's see. Can we do another one? Well, what if we took that three times twelve, uh, three times two, times six, and what if we use the commutative property? and wrote 2 times 3 times 6. Would this be the same answer? And the answer is, well, yeah, because 3 times 2 and 2 times 3 are the same thing, so um, they're this, the same products, right? Well, now I can use the associative property to group it in a different way. Is this the same answer? And yeah, the answer is still 36 because um, we know this is 36 because it says so right up here. And then here, 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2 because we use the commutative property. And then we use the associative property to change where the parentheses are. Now we have 2 times 3 times 6. Well, that's the same thing as 2 times 18. So let's see. We have side lengths of, we have 3 
times 12. We have 2 times 18. Uh, let's see, can we come up with another side length? We have a side length of 2. We have a side length of 3. Can we think of another side length, right? Well, let's see if we can. Um, let's see if we could come up with another one. How about, how about, oh, I know. I know. So let's go back with, uh, let's start with this one right here. 2 times 3 times 6. All right, so I'm going to rewrite that down here. 2 times 3 times 6. Now, we know that 2 times 3 times 6. Well, we, can know, we know that we can change that to 2 times 3 times, and then we can change 6. We can change 6 to 2 times 3. All right. Now we can use the commutative property, and we can move all these numbers around, and we can change the order of how we group them also. So we can change it so that the 2's are next to each other times, and the 3's are next to each other. So what does that mean? Well, that's the same thing as 4 times 9, because we could use our associative property to group them that way. And 4 times 9 is 36, because everything so far is equal to 36. So 9 times 4, uh, 4 times 9 is 36. So let's see. We have a side length of 2, 3, and 4. Is there another side length that we can do? And this is the one that students always forget. It's the easiest side length of them all. What if we had a 1? All of a sudden, it's going to be 1 times 36. So here are 4 that we've come up with. Oh, oh, wait, I think. Did we forget one? Yes, we did. We forgot this one. I forgot this one. 6 times 6 should be in that list. It's right there. So let's put it down there. So let's squeeze that in there and put in 6 times 6. And I think that's all of them. And basically, all of these represent rectangles that have an area of 36, because we started off with this rectangle way up here, 3 by 12, that had an area of 36. And then we just took those factors, 3 times 12, and we started to break them apart and use the commutative and the associative properties to get a whole bunch of different answers that uh, products that equaled 36, multiplication problems that equaled 36. And each one of these multiplication problems represents a rectangle. Whew, that was a lot of talking. Let's move on. So the, um, this question is saying, uh, the rectangles below have the same area, and that's going to be the important thing, and move the parentheses to find the missing side lengths. So we're going to start with this skinny rectangle. It's 1 by 36. So we know that the area is 1 times 36, which is 36 square centimeters. Now when we move down to this problem, question A, we now have 4 by 9, so 4 times 9 is our area. I'm going to zoom in. There we go. So we now have 4 times 9, and 4 times 9 is 36. And let's move that over. Let's go over here. Ooh, look at this one. So this is saying, okay, now remember, they all have the same area. We know that the, an the area, because they told us, the area is 36. All right, so we know that the answer is going to be 36. And we know that the height is 2, but we don't know what this width is, this side length. We don't know what that side length is. 
So we're starting off with a previous thing that we knew, which is 4 times 9. And look what they did. They took the 4 and they changed it to 2 times 2. And now, if we use the associative property, I now get this. So this 2 here is this 2 here. And it goes right here, 2. And then this blank space right here is 2 times 9. And 2 times 9 is 18. So we know that this missing value, the side length, is 18. Whew. All right, let's move over to question C. Oh my goodness, C. So once again, we know that the answer down here has to be 36 square centimeters. And we know that we've started off with 4 by 9. And, oh my goodness, I'm going to go with using the associative property. And they told us, look at this, they told us that the 4 stays the same, but the 9 got changed to 3 times 3. And now we're going to use the associative property to regroup them to this. 4 times 3 times 3. And that gives us 12 times 3. So what does that mean? That means this side length is 12, and this side length is 3. So the idea being, uh, for teachers, if you're wondering, why are we putting our kids through this? The idea is we want to develop um, mathematical fluency. We want students to be able to break these numbers apart and put them back together again at will to suit their purposes. So in this case, um, this area model is kind of the context. But really, without the context, we could say, well, we want students to be able to say, Take the 4, change it to 2 times 2. Take the 9, change it to 3 times 3. And now we can use the commutative property and the associative property to change this to 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 and get 6 times 6 so that students understand that 4 times 9 and 6 times 6 give us the same product. All right, That's just kind of an example of why we're asking our students to go through um, learning all this. And let's continue. One last one for this slide. So we have what looks to be a perfect square, and I think I kind of gave it away earlier just now, um, which is, okay, so we've got 12 times 3, and they took the 12 and they rewrote it, and they decomposed it to 6 times 2. And now we'll use the associative property to regroup our product our factors. So now we end up with 6 times 6, which is 36, the same 36 that we've known about all along. All right, so I'm going to zoom out so you can see everything all at once. And that is that series of problems. I thought I would spend a lot of time on this because it doesn't look like the kind of math that we had when we were kids growing up. Let's move on. And the last slide of this video, woohoo! Uh, find the area of the rectangle below. Well, it's going to be 8 times 6. And if students aren't familiar with 8 times 6 and they can't quite remember it, well, they can use the distributive property that we learned earlier. Uh, and a couple of ways we could do it. One way is we can chop this up to be 5 and 3. So we took the 8 and changed it and de uh, broke it up to 5 times 3. And so... And this portion right here is equal to uh, 5 times 6 plus this piece down here is 3 times 6. And then 5 times 6 is 30, 3 times 6 is 18. You add those together, you get 48. So that's another way to get 8 times 6 if your students don't immediately remember it. Now, so we know that the area is thir uh, 48 square centimeters. All right. So question B says, Hilda says, a 4 by 12 centimeter rectangle has the same area as 48. 
square centimeters. Let's see if this is true. All right, so what we've got down here is, and I'm going to zoom in. So we've got four is here, and then we've got 12 has been rewritten as two times six. But, um, and then we know that um, we can regroup and change it to four times two times six, which gives us eight times six. And we know from the previous problem, well, eight times six is right here, and eight times six is 48 square centimeters. And so we can zoom in, and sure enough, it turns out Hilda is correct. Four times 12 is equal to 48. And we learned that by taking the 12 and decomposing it to 2 times 6, and then using the associative property to get 8 times 6. Now, uh, a lot of third graders uh, are going to know another way to get 4 times 12. Probably, in their mind, a, an easier way. They might say, well, listen, 4 times 12 is the same thing as 4 times 10 plus 4 times 2 because 10 plus 2 is 12, and 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 2 is 8, you add those together, you get 48. Now, if students come up with this and say, hey, this is easier, hey, more power to them, don't argue with the students, uh, that's a really powerful number sense kind of a thing, and we're happy that they did that. Uh, the purpose of this lesson is just to show yet another way to go about um, relating multiplication factors and their products. I think this is the longest video I've ever made. That was Grade 3, Module 4, Lesson 11.